In this video, I would like to introduce various balancer modules for multiple cell applications. A detailed comparison between the passive and active balancer module is introduced. This includes an actual test result of the inductive active balancer, capacitive active balancer, and the passive balancer. So let's go on. A lithium-ion battery is a rechargeable battery which can be charged and discharged multiple times. But the charge voltage and discharge voltage needs to be limited to some value, which is typically 4.2 volts and 2.4 volts respectively. This is where a BMS is required. Multiple cells can be connected to the BMS for this kind of protection. When multiple cells are included, the BMS monitors the voltage of each cells and cuts off the charge or discharge process when the voltage exceeds a certain level. Problem occurs when the charge status or the capacity of each cells are different. As an example, let's assume these cells are connected to a BMS, with the first cell having a slightly lower capacity than others. When we charge these cells, the charge will be terminated as soon as the first cell reaches full capacity leaving the other cells without being fully charged. When we discharge, the first cell will be discharged faster than the other two cells, until discharge is terminated by the BMS. This is when we need a balancer module. Let me give you a brief introduction and comparison for the balancer module. This is a 4S passive balancer module. These large resistors shown in the figure dissipates power to balance each cells. These two modules are active balancer modules. The left one is an inductive type and the right one is a capacitive type. These active balancer module achieve balancing through inductors and capacitors as the name implies. Passive balancer is activated when a certain cell reaches full capacity, 4.2 volts. It dissipates excessive power of that fully charged cell, through the resistors to achieve balancing. You can also find a BMS equipped with these passive balancer. It is cheap in price, but not very efficient, since it dissipates the excessive power during charging. Active balancer, on the other hand, is activated whenever the voltage between the cells are different. Balancing is achieved by moving the charge from high voltage cells to low voltage cells. It is more expensive than the passive balancers, but very efficient, since it does not dissipate power. And since it is also activated during discharge, the usage of the cells can be increased by a great amount. This is a passive balancer that dissipates excessive power of a fully charged cell. The passive balancer module has a large resistor, which is also called, bleeding resistor, which dissipates the power. In this case, the bleeding resistor is 62 ohms, so the current flowing through this resistor is, about 68 milliamperes, which is 4.2 volts divided by 62 ohms. Let's take a look at the animation for better understanding. As I mentioned before, the passive balancer is not activated while discharging. When charging however, balancer is activated when a certain cell is fully charged and dissipates the fully charged cell until the other cells are fully charged. The active balancer is activated whenever the voltage between the cells are different. Charge is moved from high voltage cells to low voltage cells. Now let's review the test result for these balancer modules. I used this 3x7, 18650 cells with a 3S BMS for the test, with various balancer modules introduced in the previous slides. The first cell in this battery pack has a slightly lower capacity compared to the other two cells. Actually the first cell was purchased at a different date, possibly made from a different batch of the manufacturer, which should be avoided when forming a battery pack like this one. This is the charge result using only the BMS. You can see the voltage of the blue line, which is the first cell, is increasing faster than the other cells, and eventually reaching the charge protection limit of the BMS, and disconnects further charging. As you can see, the second and third cells are not fully charged. Also, when discharging, the first cell, which is the blue line, discharges faster than other cells, and reaches the discharge protection limit of the BMS, when the BMS cuts off further discharging. The result when using a passive balancer is not very different. As when using only a BMS, the blue line first reaches the limit and the charging stops, leaving the other cells below fully charged. Why would this happen? The balancing capability of the passive balancer is dependent on the resistance value of the resistor. In this case, the bleeding resistor is 62 ohms, 
so the current flowing through the resistor is 68 milliamperes. When a charging current for a cell exceeds 68 milliamperes, the voltage of that cell will rise further until the BMS cuts off the charging. So, for the passive balancer to achieve balancing, the dissipated power should exceed the charging power for a certain cell. It is usually not recommended to use the passive balancer if the capacity of the battery pack is large. This is the result for inductive active balancer. As you can see in this graph, the voltage of cell 1 is slightly lower than the other two. And as soon as I connected the active balancer here, the balancing was activated, and the charge of cell 2 is transferred to cell 1 to achieve balancing. The overall charge result was not a satisfactory. The cells were not balanced after charging was complete. But as you can see from these voltage fluctuations, that the balancer seems to have at least tried to balance the cells. Now when we discharged the cells while connected to the active balancer, you can see that cell 2, the red line, and cell 1, the blue line, discharged together at a similar rate. This clearly shows that the balancing was activated during discharge. However, cell 3, the green line was not balanced together with the other cells. The reason is not clear, but later I knew that this inductive active balancer is to be used for a cell capacity less than 60 amp hours, which is lower than the capacity of my battery pack of 71.4 amp hours. And that might be the reason. Now, let's take a look at the capacitive active balancer. This capacitive balancer is recommended for using with a battery of 60 to 300 amp hours capacity, which meets the capacity of the battery pack used for this test. In the beginning of the charge profile, you can see that the balancer balances by itself, all the cells as soon as connected. You can also see that the capacitive balancer has perfectly balanced the cells during charging and discharging altogether. Now let's summarize what we have learned. There were three types of balancer modules we introduced in this video. Passive balancer is activated during charging, only when a cell exceeds 4.2 volts. It achieves balancing between cells by dissipating the charge through the bleeding resistor. The cells can be fully balanced only when the dissipating current is greater than the charging current. It is low cost, but inefficient, since it dissipates excessive power. Active balancer is activated when the voltage between cells are different, regardless of charging or discharging. Inductive types are recommended for cell capacity of less than 60 amp hours. Capacitive types are recommended for cell capacity more than 60 amp hours and up to 300 amp hours. Active balancers also require standby power. So if you are not using the cells for a while, it is better to disconnect the balancer. This is it. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.